Hey everyone, Barry at SeaTech Review. What if I told you for 2026, the Ford F-150 3.5 liter EcoBoost is actually gonna make less horsepower than the year prior in 2025? This is unfolding as we speak. Let's get into this. <laughs> All right, first, I want to show you guys what I'm talking about. If we go over to Ford.com and we look up the 2026 Ford F-150, I notice if you go down in the specs and you look at the horsepower numbers, you see three engines spoken about right here, the 5.0, the 3.5 high output, and the 5.2 supercharged V8. Horsepower numbers all look the same, right? We look at 2025. Here's the horsepower numbers, 400 horse for the 5.0, 410 torque, uh, high outputs, 450 horsepower, 510 torque, supercharged V8, 720 horse, 640 for the Raptor R. But if we keep getting down to these specs, I've noticed something has changed. Check out this number right here for the 3.5 EcoBoost and the 3.5 Power Boost Hybrid. And then look at these torque numbers. So let's start right here. 3.5 EcoBoost, 382 horsepower. For 2025, it was 400 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs. But what about torque? Torque stayed unchanged. Same horsepower or same torque numbers at same RPM. But now let's look at the power boost. 420 horsepower versus 430 horsepower. 570 pound-feet of torque at 3,000 RPMs versus 578. So both of these engines lost some power. The standard 3.5 liter lost 18 horsepower, which that's almost a 5% hit in one calendar year. That's a lot. But the torque remained the same. But what's odd is this, the power boost actually only lost 10 horsepower, but actually picked up eight pounds of torque. So this tells me something's going on in both of these engines but the power boost was able to compensate. There's been a change for 2026 model year. And there's been a change for 2026 model year on a few powertrains. The ones that we can't get the full specs on yet is the 3.5 liter high output. I'm hoping that engine stayed unchanged with power. If you go through here and your web on the website, you won't be able to see any more specs, but the 2.7 liter is not listed in here either. I'm hoping the 3. Point, the 2.7 liter didn't lose any power for 2026 model year. But all assumptions are, and I cannot believe in my life I would ever see this, but some of these 2026 model year vehicles are going to see early pull ahead, so I'm told, with gasoline particulate filters in the catalyst emission system. So instead of just having your three-way catalyst, which is going after hydrocarbons and different byproducts, nitric oxides, things of that nature. Now they're adding a secondary device, the gasoline particulate filter. Just gonna show you guys, if you're not familiar with what a gasoline particulate filter is, diesel particulate filters started production on several diesel vehicles back in, I think like 2007 and a half, 2008 time period to meet the emissions. So diesel trucks put out a little soot you know, you get on the gas a little bit and you see a little black puff. The diesel particulate filters were made to kind of capture that. Well, we're now seeing this happen to gasoline engines. And I never thought I'd see this in my career or my life in the automotive industry. But this has happened in Europe for a few years now. A lot of the higher end Audis and Volkswagens and a lot of those cool cars there, they have stricter emission uh, standards in Europe than they do in the U.S. They've seen that. And there have been some other cars in the U.S. also but I didn't think we'd see it on a pickup truck. But basically what a gasoline particulate filter is, is it's basically in layman's terms, think of a big sponge. You got all this particulate. What I mean by particulate, it's like that black soot. When you see a car maybe accelerate and you see a little tiny puff of black smoke coming out of the tailpipe, that's what a gasoline particulate does. It catches the soot. What we've all been used to in the automotive industry for like 40, 50 years is a three-way catalyst 
which is defined here as TWC. But that is what manages your hydrocarbons. And it it really, cat catalytic converters hardly have an impact on performance anymore. They've now got them where they flow so freely that you could see maybe three to five horsepower impact if you just removed the catalytic converter. But now there's another device with more back pressure, which is going to impact fuel economy and it's going to impact performance. Oh my gosh. I, I never thought I'd see this day, guys. And I hope I'm wrong on this. I heard this coming down the pipeline, but I thought with these emission standards changing, uh, now that the EPA has rolled back all this stuff that we've been told, um, from what I'm seeing for 2026 model year, this looks like this would have been the impact. And that's an 18 horsepower impact, if that's the case by adding a gasoline particulate filter. Now, what's interesting about this is with the hybrid, the hybrid only loses 10 horsepower, not 18, and it picks up eight pounds of torque. So what this tells me is they've made a change to their hybrid system and their electric assist motor is actually making some more power to make up. So it must be somewhere between a 10, uh, a 10 horsepower improvement on the hybrid engine. And I'm gonna guess somewhere like another 10 pound feet of torque improvement. What we don't see here is the 2.7 liter and the high output. I really hope for the Raptor guys, we don't see a horsepower reduction because they're gonna lose their minds, especially when the RHO is at 540 horse. So if that thing goes from 450 down to 430 and the RHO has 540. And the other thing I don't understand about this, if this is the case, what other brands are we seeing gasoline particulate filters and horsepower reduction to meet these emission numbers? I'm not seeing this on the RHO and I'm not seeing it on other on other uh, vehicles. And this is for a whole separate video, guys, that we could go and belabor the point on EPA, greenhouse gases, NOx requirements, all this. That's saved for another time. But I just want to give you guys a real quick, just kind of where things are at. Uh, basically, the EPA breaks things down into... Uh, your your pollutants, and then greenhouse gases. It's confusing. It confuses me too. But here's what we know for sure today. The greenhouse gas and CAFE standards, specifically start with CAFE standards. This is basically the one where RAM has been paying $780 million a year in fines to the government because their vehicle didn't meet a fuel average of fuel economy. That's been removed completely. There's no more penalty anymore for car manufacturers that don't hit their cafe uh, fuel economy requirement. There's no penalties for them. But before the new administration was in plant place, there was plans to add very strict emission standards starting in 2026, 2027 model year and ramping up all the way into 2032. Each year it would ratchet it up. Um, I'm talking ridiculous in my opinion ridiculous standards because we've already eliminated 99 percent of the emissions pollutants the last 10 15 years this would just take it to another level of reduced fuel uh reduced fuel economy reduced performance an increased cost and, in, and reduced reliability i was hoping we would not see this actually make it these new regulations make it uh to these new model year vehicles because I don't want to see people having getting less fuel economy, less performance, um, more expensive costs. It's, it's just nothing anybody really wants. But so far, this is looking like the 26 F-150 at least maybe got an early pull ahead for some emissions compliant vehicles they were trying to build up. Maybe it was carbon credits and they were just too far along in the design cycle. But if you're not familiar, guys, with some of these different emission standards, here's what you need to know. There's ULEV, SULEV, and PZEV. Um, these, some of these standards have been around for over 20 years. PZEV stands for partial zero emissions vehicle. SULEV stands for super ultra low emissions vehicle. And then you have ultra or sulfur ultra low emissions vehicle. Uh, and then ultra low emissions vehicle. Each one of these terms basically means a different amount of pollutants that is tied to that regulation. I don't want to bore you guys with that. What we want to know now is the EPA going to roll back the emission standards that impact all of these requirements, the emission output on these vehicles, or what we're seeing for the 2026 Ford F-150, is this the future now we're seeing with these new engines, reduced horsepower? 
I hope it's not. And you guys know my take on this whole thing. Um, I want reliability and I want fuel economy. Performance numbers are not as important. Um, but if this is the case, there's going to be a lot of upset people. So the question is, did we just hit the pinnacle of performance and reliability with 2025 model year vehicles, maybe specifically F-150s? More to come on this, guys. I'm going to dive deeper in this and get some more details on specifically what's going on. But if what we're seeing right here with the 3.5 EcoBoost and the 3.5 Power Boost is the future of performance with gasoline particulate filter, if you're on the market to be looking for a new vehicle, you might want to really think about what the next few years look like as far as performance. You might want to snag up an existing 2025 if that's the case. And I will leave you with this. If we go back to 2006, 2007, I remember this time frame really well. This was the end of standard three-way catalyst and EGR with diesel trucks. And it went to the next level where they added a diesel particulate filter to the diesel pickup trucks. The years following, 2007 and a half, eight, nine, 10, were arguably some of the worst diesel trucks worst reliability, worst fuel economy trucks ever made. And this was across the board. The heavy duty diesel market, on-road, non-road, class two to class four trucks, people were very upset. I had a 2008 Super Duty, the truck with the 6.4 liter power stroke got horrible fuel economy versus the later years with the more refined emission system. But those first three years rolling that out was not a time period of diesel trucks you wanted. So is there a chance 2026 might be our 2008 again on some of these pickup trucks? If that's the case, learn from history, guys, do your homework. I'm gonna be diving into this more, stay tuned on this because I wanna understand the answers for this. Thanks for watching.